Listening Society, a podcast dedicated to suspense and horror stories from the golden age of radio. I'm Eric. I'm Tim. I'm Joshua. We love scary old time radio stories. There's nothing quite like a disembodied voice telling a genuinely disturbing tale. But maybe that's just us. Maybe these stories don't actually hold up after all this time. So we're revisiting these old shows to put the terror on trial. Do they still work in the 21st century or are we being deceived by nostalgia? Are these stories blood-chilling or butt-numbing? For tonight's episode, it's my choice, and I chose uh, an episode of Lights Out called Poltergeist. It aired on October of 1942. Lights Out was one of the earliest radio horror programs, and Lights Out aired on different networks at various times uh, from about January 3rd of 1934 to the summer of 1947. It was hosted by Arch Obler, who wrote seemingly for every single radio show ever. Obler met the demand of this by adopting an unusual scripting procedure. What he would do is he would lie in bed at night and he would smoke cigarettes and improvise the scripts into a dictaphone, acting out every line of the play. In this way, he was able to complete a script quickly, sometimes in as little as 30 minutes. We could spend all night sharing nerdy facts about Lights Out. For example, Obler's first script for Lights Out was Burial Service, about a paralyzed girl who is buried alive. NBC was flooded with outraged letters in response because it turns out burying a paralyzed little girl is always too soon. Too soon. I can't find anywhere, by the way, a listing of who the actors are, which has been really bugging me. Uh, I don't understand why everything isn't on the internet. I thought everything was on the internet. But not only is this episode spine tingling, but the editing of the live ads for ironized yeast create an unintentional hilarity. So listen for that as well. Forget the petty distractions around you. Forget what you think you know. Forget everything but what you hear right now. It's late at night, and a chill has set in. You're alone, and the only light you see is coming from an antique radio. Listen to the sounds coming from the speaker. Listen to the music, and listen to the voices. This is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you, these Lights Out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. But if you're fascinated by the mysterious, the fantastic, the unearthly, then anticipate chills in our story of Poltergeist. Hey, <laughs> that was swell. Now let's go to town. St. Louis woman with her diamond ring. Kicking that man oh, around. No. no, stop that, Kay. What's the matter? Am I scaring the horse? Oh, it seems like a sacrilege singing a song like that out here. This beautiful, clean snow and blue sky. Well, what's wrong with a hot song to keep us warm? If you think the St. Louis blues is going to dirty up the snow, you ought to hear Frankie and Johnny the way I sing it. Oh, stop it, Kay. You're not funny at all. Why can't you enjoy the fresh air without that cabaret sort of thing? Oh, just an old-fashioned gal, eh, Florence? How about you, Edna? Don't you like my songs either? You haven't said anything for the last five minutes. Well, I, I haven't been listening to you to tell the truth. I love to watch the snow sort of... Flow along under the sleigh. When you say that, gal, smile. 
Gosh, did you ever see more snow in your life? The man at the hotel said it had been snowing on and off up here for two weeks. I think coming out here to the country is the best thing we three have done since we started rooming together. Hiking in the snow is terribly healthy. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. The healthier I get, the worse I feel. <laughs> Crazy idiot. She does say the funniest things, doesn't she? I always say that Kay ought to... Oh! Hallelujah, we're here. Is this as far as we go, driver? That's right, miss. Can't go no further down this road to count of the drift. Oh, my goodness. The drifts are too deep for a horse. How can we walk through them? I second the motion. Well, you young ladies don't have to worry none so long as you keep going down the valley over there. Snow ain't piled up that way all the way to Ma Jenkins. Oh, well, that's marvelous. Come on, girls. Let's get started. So long. Take care of yourselves, girls. Come on, Edna. Goodbye, so Mr. Well, listen to the snow talking at us. It's very dry snow. Our feet rub particles of it together, and the friction makes a sound. It's kind of scary, isn't it? Why? Well, I don't know. It's just as if the snow was sort of trying to talk to us. I mean, as if it was angry at our trespassing. Hey, don't tell me we're trespassing. I don't want any country squire taking any pot shots at my uh, constitutional amendment with rock salt. No, thank you. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Kay. We're not trespassing. Why, this path through the valley here over to Mrs. Jenkins' house is the favorite hike of everyone who comes up this way during the winter. What's Mrs. Jenkins got anyway that makes people walk their feet off? <laughs> Wait till you taste her cooking. Eat. Oh, boy, let's go. It's awfully quiet out here, isn't it? Oh, that's the glory of it. I've had the roar of the subway in my ears so long. Okay, don't walk so fast. Come on, look what I found. Oh, come on, Edna. Oh, please. Let me take your arm. I'm getting out of breath. But well, take it easy. There's no hurry. <sighs> well, what is it, Kay? Look, through the circle of trees here. Look what I discovered. Well, isn't that interesting? It's a sort of a natural amphitheater. Sure. Say, who was this guy, Daniel Boone? Well, what's an amphitheater? Well, that, that means an oval circling place with rising tiers of seats. It's You know, like that place we went to for the horse show. Oh. Back in the times of the Greeks, they had outdoor theaters. Listen to the professor. And they used to places just like this, where the ground sloped up and made a sort of a natural arena or stage below. Theater. That's an idea. Sit down, gals, and I'll give you a special performance of the K Follies. It's awful snowy here, isn't it? I'll trample it down with my spring dance. Welcome, sweet thing. <laughs> Isn't she a nut dancing in the snow? If I had that girl's energy. Oh, she's really grateful, da, 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 isn't she? I'll bet if she went on the stage. Oh, she... Kay. She fell. Kay. Oh. Kay, did you hurt yourself? Oh, did I land on my dignity. Here, give me a hand. Here, I'll help you. There you are. Oh, did I take a flop. Did you hurt yourself badly? I'll oh, live. What in the world did I trip over? Oh, no wonder. Look at that rock under the snow. No wonder I did a nosedive. Oh, my gee. goodness. There are rocks like that all over. Oh. A person could break their neck if they... Girls. What's the matter? What is it? Kay, the rock you tripped over. It... It's not a rock. What are you talking about? Of course it's a rock. Well, yes, but it's something... Something more than that. It's a tombstone. What is... Tombstone? Oh, no, it, it can't be. Look for yourself. It says... Here lies buried the remains of one who, restless in life... Stop! Don't read anymore. Stop! And and all these other stones laying flat on the ground. They're tombstones, too? Yes. Whew! What a place to pick to dance. Oh. What's the matter, Edna? What did you scream for? Kay, you... You danced on the grave. What? You danced on the grave. I saw you. I saw you do it. You danced on the grave. Okay. Edna, stop it. Stop it. Oh, what's come into her? Edna, stop okay. acting Edna, like that. Edna, stop for heaven's sake. Control yourself. Okay. Okay, I'm so sorry for you. You danced on a grave. For heaven's sake, stop talking like that. Sure, I danced on a grave. Well, yes, of course you did. It was perfectly accidental. And what if it was? What of it? The poltergeist. The what? Edna Hanson, what are you talking about? What's that word you just used? Poltergeist. Okay, what have you done? You superstitious little fool. If you don't stop talking that way, I'm going to slap your face. What's the matter with you? I didn't do anything. You walked on the grave. 
Mr. Deft on the grave. Oh, Edna, be sensible. We all walked on graves, but it was purely accidental. Yeah. We had no intention of desecrating them. It doesn't matter, I tell you. It doesn't matter. The poltergeist will come. I know he will. Oh, what the you? She's crazy. Edna, what are you talking about? What's the poltergeist? What are you so frightened about? My father, he told me, if you walk on a grave, if you dance on a grave, the poltergeist. Poltergeist what? What is a poltergeist? An evil spirit. It comes out of the grave. It kills. It destroys. It'll kill us. It'll kill us all. Stop it. Throw things oh, out of please. Yes. Lay It'll off that way. Get mad now. But it won't get me. I'll run Edna, away. come back I'll here. She's gone insane. I'll get her. Edna, okay, catch her. Edna. Edna, don't run away. Nothing will hurt you. Nothing. Oh, Edna, look out. Okay. Okay, what happened? That stone. It hit Edna. Edna. Edna, open your eyes. Blood. Blood all over her face. Kay, who threw that stone? Who threw it? I don't know. It came from the graveyard. Take it easy. Oh, Doctor, she won't die. <laughs> Tell me she won't die. No, no, of course not. And you're sure that her skull isn't fractured? Oh, absolutely not. Maybe a little concussion, that's all. Well, it's almost five. Our train. Can we get someone to help us carry her down to the station so we can get her on board? Board? I'm telling you that little friend of yours shouldn't be moved out of bed for a week. If you do... Well, it might be just too bad. Oh, Flo, what do we do? Uh, you go home, Kay. I'll stay with her. Oh, no, you won't. I'm not leaving you here alone in this godforsaken place. If you stay, I stay too. Kay, please be sensible. Why should we all lose our jobs when you... If you'll go... excuse me, you ladies, I've got to be on my way. Oh, yes, of course, Doctor. Is there anything more you can do for Edna, Doctor? Any medicine or something? Nope, I've done all I can do. She's sleeping comfortable now. Uh... Miss? Yes, Doctor? The constable's sick, too, you know, and he's sort of depending on me to keep things straight. Now, uh, just how did you say that little friend of yours got hurt? Well, it was just the way we explained, Doctor. That rock came flying and... Yes, yes, I know, but who threw the rock? We... we don't know. What? That's true, Doctor. We don't know. But somebody threw it. You can't change facts. Somebody threw the rock that cracked her head. For heaven's sakes, old man, you don't think we did it. No, okay, miss, I didn't. Excited. Doctor, you've got to believe us. It happened just the way we said. All at once, that rock came flying through the air from the direction of the graveyard. It struck Edna, and, and we just didn't see who threw it. All right, if that's your story. Oh, you better stay in your rooms here. I mean, you better not be leaving until the constable's on his feet and has a chance to talk with you. I'll be back in a few hours and see how the girl is. He doesn't believe us. What difference does it make? We know what we saw. But what did we see? She was running. She she fell. Kay. Well, let's not fool ourselves. There was no one there to throw that rock. There must have been. But there wasn't. Stop! saying that. Aren't you brave enough to face facts? There wasn't any place for anyone to hide. I saw that stone. It seemed to come down out of the air. So slowly. Florence, if you don't stop talking like that. I remember what what Edna said. It throws things. Stop looking at me like that. You're giving me the jitters. She said the poltergeist throws things. Spirit of evil. Florence, Rob, have you gone crazy, too? Why should we laugh at things like that? What right have we got to laugh? How do we know there aren't powers we can't see or understand? Powers of evil that revenge and insult, just like an evil man. Kay, how do we know? What are you talking like that for? What are you trying to scare me for? You, you're supposed to be the most intelligent one of us all. You with your college degrees. Sure, sure, I danced on the grave. But the dead are dead and they can't revenge a thing. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. I tell you, it's not... What? You said Edna. Come on. Edna, we're coming to you. Don't be afraid. We're coming. Open the door, Florence. It's not locked. Duck, it won't Here, let me. Edna, what is it? What? Oh. 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 Oh
Now what? <gasps> On your head. Oh. I run a decent place, and I don't want you... <gasps> oh. The girl on the bed. Her head. It's crushed flat in by a rock. God in heaven. It's not a rock. It's a tombstone. I I wish I could cry But I haven't got any more tears Oh, Edna Edna Florence, darling, please You'll kill yourself if you keep on like that Oh, if this horrible night would only end It was my fault Mine I was the one who got her out here. She didn't want to go. She hates the country. But I made her come. I made her. No. No, you're not the one to blame. I am. I danced on the grave. But she was so good. So sweet. Oh, why does it have to be Edna? Why? You're right. It wasn't right for it to be her, was it? Oh, no. I did it, not her. I did it. I danced on the grave. I danced on the grave. You can't deny what you see with your own eyes. But I tell you, Doc, nobody could have carried that tombstone up the steps without me seeing him, could they? But there it is, ain't it? Yeah. There it is. Either somebody's playing a terrible joke or... or... You don't have to say it, Doc. I know. That's just the trouble. You don't know, and I don't know, and nobody knows. Yeah. And... And that tombstone... Well, what about the tombstone? I... I ain't quite sure, but... That's a tombstone out of the old burying grounds up at the bend. You're crazy. No, I ain't either. Well, that place is a good three miles from here. Yeah. I know. Who could have carted a heavy stone like that for three miles? Yeah. Who? Stop looking like that, you flap-eared old fool. Human hands carried that stone in here and killed that girl? Sure. Yeah, the constable will find out who did it the minute he's on his feet again. You wait and see. No, he won't, Doc. You're smarter than me and all that, but... No, this time you're wrong. There ain't nobody that takes in breath and leaves out breath like you and me. Or the constable's gonna find out who killed that girl. You know that, Doc. Oh, stop talking. I wish the constable was here and this night was over. It's been a terrible night. Terrible. Terrible clock. Yeah, I know. I've been sitting here listening to it. I can't stand it anymore. I'll stop it. Why bother with it? Come on to bed, Kay. Please. There's no use sitting there. It won't help her. Yeah. Nothing can help her. But maybe I can help you. Me? It was my fault. Mine. I was the reason it happened. It killed her and it'll kill you and me too unless I stop. No, don't say that. It's true. But why should you be hurt? I'm the blame, not you. Listen, Flo. I'll go out there. There? Out there to the graveyard. What? I'll talk to her. Kay. I'll, I'll tell her I didn't mean to do it. Oh, no. But I didn't know where I was dancing. Please. Maybe somehow it'll hear, listen to me, and, and then it won't hurt oh, you. Oh, no, no. I won't let you go out there. It'll kill but you. Florence. It'll kill you, too. But Florence. No, no. I'll hold you. You can't go. You can't. All right. 
Come on to bed, Kay, please. In the morning, in the morning things will be different. But it won't. Nothing will hurt us. And then they're right outside the door. They won't let anything get at us. Oh, please, Kay, please come to bed. Yeah. We'll, we'll pray. Pray? I, I don't exactly know how. Just say anything. Anything. Like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Now you. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Sleep? I can't sleep anymore. Kay, tomorrow, I mean, when it gets light and everything, do you think people will believe us? Do you think so, Kay? I, I'm not quite sure what happened. I always used to be so sure about things. And now I... Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay, where... The window. She went out the window. She's gone out there. To the graveyard. To talk to it. Okay, why did you go? Why did you go? I'll go out there, too. We should be so frightened out there alone. I'll go, too. I'll go, too. Oh, so cold. My hands. Snow so sharp. Cutting my legs. Oh, why did you go out there, Kay? Why did you? I've got to find you. The wind. Oh, why doesn't the wind stop? Blow, blow, thou winter wind. Thou art not so unkind as... Oh, I've got to find you, Kate. I've got to find you. It's snowing. I love snow. And I didn't like snow. Where are you, Kate? Where are you? I've lost my way. I've lost the road. Where are you, Kate? Kate, where are you? Okay. I heard you, Kay. I heard you. I'm coming to you, Kay. We'll talk to it. We'll talk to it together. We'll tell it we didn't mean any harm, won't we, Kay? Won't we? Poor Edna. We can't help her, Kay. We can't help Edna. But I'm coming to help you, Kay. I'm coming. I'm coming. I hear you. I hear you. I'm coming, darling. I'm coming to help. I'm coming to help you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I hear you. I hear you calling my name. I hear you. Yes. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Where are you? Where are you? This way, Hooper. They must have come this way. <laughs> Climbing out the window like that in the middle of the night. They must have gone crazy, the both of them. Well, let's not worry about that now. We've got to find them. Here, give me that lantern. What is it, Doc? What have you found? A shoe. One of the girl's shoes. My gosh, stuck in the snow. We're going the right way. Come on, move fast. We've got to get to them. Doc, look at this. What is it? Over there. Ain't these footprints? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right. Footprints. Hello, up ahead. 
Hello. Doc, we're we're getting pretty close to the old burying grounds. Well? Maybe. Oh, look here, Doc. Let's not be fools. Let's wait till morning. What? Let those frightened girls freeze to death? Get along. But, Doc, I... You uh, come with me or the whole town will know what a yellow-livered no-good you are. All right. All right. You don't have to get so sore, Doc. Hello? Hello? Anybody up there? Hello? Doc. Doc, look. What? There they are. Up ahead. Glory be, they're alive. The both of them. Come on. Doc. Doc, look at them. That's the burying ground up there. And they're dancing. Dancing on the graves. But they must be out of their heads. Come on. We've got to stop. Doc. Doc, wait for me. Oh, Doc, it's... It's dark again. Where are they, Doc? Where are the girls? Have they... Have they stopped dancing? Yes. Huh? They've stopped dancing. Did... Did they ever dance? What are you talking about, Doc? We saw them. We saw them dancing in this place with our own eyes. Did we? The moonlight. Here it comes again. See with your eyes again. <gasps> oh, no. Both of the girls froze stiff to the ground. Each with her head crushed by a tombstone. Would you mind telling us, me, whether there actually are such things as poltergeists? All I can tell you is this. There are authenticated records in existence that, in the city of London on the 27th day of April, 1872, from four in the afternoon on a Thursday until half past eleven at night, a certain room in a certain house was deluged by stones thrown from no apparent source. The London police surrounded the house but they found no trace of whoever or whatever was throwing those stones with a murderous violence. I, uh, I see. So much for poltergeist. But what about next week? Well, anything can happen, but uh, specifically next week, Mangara. A strange title and a strange story. The power of suggestion. The dictators have shown us to what evil purposes that power can be used. Well, next week, a man who, uh... <laughs> But that, as usual, is next week. Yes. Lights Out, written and directed by Arch Obler, will come to you again next Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to listen for the amazing story of Mungara. It is later than you think. You're listening to the mystery. Old Radio Listening Society podcast. I'm Eric. I'm Tim. I'm Joshua. This week, we, or I should say I, it was my choice this week. I chose Poltergeist, which you just heard. That was from October of 1942 from the show Lights Out, uh, and of course, hosted and written by Arch Obler. Uh, so there you have it, gentlemen. That was the one I selected as we head into the jury part of our program to figure out, does it stand the test of time? Is it scary? Uh, what's your first thoughts? Joshua. I think it's definitely still scary. It's a little more antiquated. I think even for the time, it was intentionally supposed to be an old story, right? They were in a horse-drawn carriage at the beginning and walking through the woods to visit some old lady in the woods who's a good cook, <laughs> who yes. apparently in 
<laughs> Old timey days, you just knock on the door and hear. We hear you're a good cook <laughs> in a city that consists of about two people. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing about. That is exactly how the world used to be, and I miss it. I wasn't alive then, but you could walk up and go, "I hear you're a good cook," and get a meal. This has some elements that I love about Arch Obler, and that is he does a lot of character work. Um, he loves to have sort of banter between people that is sort of mundane, sometimes maybe a little ridiculous, but he quickly um, creates these characters. Um, mm-hmm. You know, right away you know um, that Florence is the smart one, college educated from the city. Mm-hmm. Um, she explains why snow makes noise. <laughs> you know? uh, I need a college education for that. You, you do. I thought that might have been a little aside for audiences who have never experienced snow before. That's what the noise you're hearing <laughs> yeah. is. Oh. He was explaining the sound effect, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Like, maybe. For those of you in southern Florida yeah. listening. Why are they walking through Rice Krispies? They, <laughs> it's on styrofoam. Understand. And then, of course, uh, Kay is a, a body, a body lady. We, we know don't that use that right word right. enough anymore. Uh, body. Yeah, and then we have the very meek, timid, but sweet Edna. So he sets those characters with just a very little bit of dialogue right away. And I think that and now we have that image of him lying in bed with a dictaphone <laughs> playing all three of these movies. <laughs> <movies. laughs> yep. Extra hilarious. Extra hilarious. Yeah, I, I think that it's absolutely essential to... Uh, in radio drama to establish distinct personalities uh, because not only does it drive your story and help with the story because then everybody's going to have a different reaction to all the things that are going on. But I think it makes it easier for the listener to discern between the, the characters, not that their voices aren't different, but if one's talking a certain way, another one's talking a certain way, one's smart and one's dumb and one's scared and one's, you know, body. <laughs> yeah. And you got... th- th- then it's easier to discern that. And I think that that's not just Arch. I think Arch, because that's what those of us who are buddies <laughs> with him called it. Good old Arch. But everybody who wrote for that shot, it's, it's immediately very distinct, extremely distinct characters uh, and personality traits to, uh, to d- differentiate them. And yeah, he sets it up really quick. Yes. I, uh, I loved how the quaintness and the sort of Christmas postcard aspect of the start is in contrast to the brutal, visceral things that happen later. Just <laughs> gut wrenching, horrible. Mm hmm. Yeah. Crushed heads. I was like, that came up fast. That was very sudden. <laughs> ah. Yeah, well, yeah, the crushed. Yeah. There's really no plot to this. I mean, <laughs> and I don't. I, <laughs> I don't even mean that in a negative way. These they are going go to the, the woods. woods. They dance on a grave. They by all accident. Die. By accident. Right? Yeah. And yeah, then they, they don't end go, up, hey, there's a grave. Let's dance on it. And then they ended up <laughs> in the house. Yeah. And then uh, they got theirs. And Edna, the the one who is the the, your, the weakest link, who did no dancing on any graves, is the first one to have her head crushed. Isn't uh, it? By the by the. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I will give you this. By the tombstone. Lugged, <laughs> oh, yeah. The lugged throwing of the tombstone. Three miles away or whatever it was. Lugged a tombstone <laughs> floating through the air and crushed her head. Yeah, okay, so good point. Why her? She didn't do anything wrong. But That's a, re- a really good question about the order that these things happened in. Um, I was trying to put a little sense of that of Edna's the first one who sort of acknowledged what this is and ran and sort of instantly paid a price. Mm-hmm. And it's only after, because Kay is the one who leaves first. Is that right? Am I getting that right? Yeah. After she has acknowledged that this really is a horrible monster thing and prays. Right. Yes. Uh, and it, sort of when she buys into it, she becomes marked. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm working too hard on that, but. No, yeah, it's interesting, though. Like Again, like, how much is intentional? How much is, I'm going to kill this one off. Who knows? The actress might have had, you know. Somewhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> Killer first, see? The other thing that Obler does to great effect is sort of extending things for a little too long. It's very uncomfortable. Like when um, Kate disappears into the woods um, and Florence goes after her. Yeah. And when she's calling out to her, mm-hmm. um, where it's like, here I am, Florence, and it just mm-hmm. goes on and on. And then there's a really creepy subtle change that goes on a little too long and she moves from here I am Florence to here we are Florence yeah and right two go, voices yeah. <laughs> yeah right so 
that I found, I, I, the, the, the her following into the woods and follow me and come get me and all that, I found that terrifying. The prayer Tim brought up. The prayer is that moment that it, I, it may be my favorite moment of writing in this. And it's what we referred to last week when we referred to, we did a house in Cypress Canyon. And I was talking about, I just, it kind of makes me crazy when people in any entertainment form, <laughs> movies or this or whatever, don't react like how I think normal people would react in a situation like this that they're thrown into. A little too much bravado or a little too much thinking instead of just running in a circle and peeing your pants. Uh, The prayer is an example of why I love that moment so much because she says, all right, we're going to pray. And it just seemed really real to me. Like, this is so weird. And things have gotten so crazy out of hand. And I don't understand what's going on. And I don't understand what's going on. on so scared. Yeah. Let's pray. And not very much a praying person either. And then the other one chips in, like comes in. And all right, mm-hmm. you're right. What else is there to do? We'll start praying. So I love that moment, which I also found really terrifying because of the truthfulness of that. Mm-hmm. It's very nothing much happening. And by the way, I want to go back. Um, so there is a plot. They dance in the grave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then the ghost gets mad, mm-hmm. kills him. That's a plot. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That is. It's linear. Did we do we discuss yet the idea of the guy driving the horse, why he didn't drive him all the way up to the house? He just stops. Well, didn't he say that the drifts were too big for the horse? Or... Is that what it was? Or So you're going to walk from here. You're going to... That's yeah, that's but if the drifts are too big for a horse, <laughs> hey ladies, <laughs> pull up your old timey skirts and wade through the snow. Presumably, this food don't will- dance on the grave. <laughs> well, I was I, I, a detail I caught this time because I've listened to this more than once. Um, on this last view, listening, oh, okay, uh, was the before they acknowledge it's a, realize that it's a graveyard. They call it an, an amphitheater. They sort of mm-hmm. mistake it for being this. This ancient pagan theater space. Oh, that's right. An interesting detail. Which is what inspires yeah, uh, they dance, yeah. Kay to dance. Yeah. That is, I'd never, I've glossed over that three times. Like, never really thought, why, wonder why it looks like an amphitheater. And Florence used her college degree to <laughs> explain what an amphitheater is. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I never really glommed onto that, you know. Yeah. Like, and then when uh, the deputy and the doctor see them at the end, their first glance of them, they see all three of them dancing again in this sort mm-hmm. of amphitheater, and then, and then they had they're to, dead, and their heads right. are crushed again. And then you know, and then everybody had to pay twelve bucks. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's going to be a cover charge. Let's go. <laughs> this might be one of those realms where writing this script in thirty minutes made it seem huh? very deliberately ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some uh, other of my notes from this: um, the death scene where she does get her head broke, skull broken. I found that unbelievably gruesome yeah i found it regardless if you think why is there a headstone and where did it come from and why did the ghost lug that there had to be something closer nearby you could have it doesn't matter her the actress the Mm -hmm. actress dying did a fantastic job of scaring the bleep out of me in her death scene yeah, the weird size, and it was unclear oh, yeah. what was the like the death rattle uh, yep. from her, and what was the gasping response from mm-hmm. the people looking at her, and oof. and they they didn't yeah. acknowledge what had happened until another character still comes into the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just found, I kept imagining her on a mic going, "Okay, you're dying," and I instead of doing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot more to it. She died, man. Like it was yeah. really great. Um, uh, the prayer I mentioned and the ghost calling uh, her out is, I think, the pinnacle of the scary of yep. this, like you, you following that out of, of the house. Um, the um, unintentional uh, edited commercial uh, <laughs> was accidentally hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we only got part of the ironized yeah. ease. Uh, I believe let's, that let's, you told me, Joshua, that uh, you beat me to it, uh, and you went and looked up ironized yeast. <laughs> yep. It, it was a diet fad in the late 30s to early 40s, not to lose weight, but to gain it. Mm. Uh, yeast apparently promotes weight gain, and vitamin B increases appetite. So um, if you were a woman um, and you were lacking- Or Joshua. F- full, curvaceous- <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, but if you were a man, it would make you strong and ripped, apparently, just by- Having some ironized yeast. In fact, I found an ad and they had some hilarious um, 
words to go with this ad. Good news for thousands of girls who have no sex appeal. And no sex appeal is all in capital letters. <laughs> oh, ouch. Thousands gain 10 to 25 pounds quickly with ironized yeast. Or there's also an ad featuring a tiny little man ogling a voluptuous lady while thinking, a skinny man hasn't a chance. I wish I could gain flesh. <laughs> gain flesh. That, and that was another one Arch Obler wrote. Gain flesh. That was one of them. Yes. That is uh, so interesting, isn't it? About gaining weight. Yeah. Well, it's you know, not a concern anymore. Getting out of the depression and <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a lot of food, and then that you know whatever there is too much of is not what we want to see anymore. Does that make sense? <laughs> Do you have any unironized? <laughs> so it was it was a, it was the supplement of the day. Yeah, kind of like yeah, 1930s Whole Foods sold it. <laughs> right, copious quantities. Some kind of what do they call powder? Some kind of powder at one of them powder stores. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Weightlifter guy stores, yeah. and they drink powder and everything, and then. <laughs> Right? It's we, so much powder. We don't often go into those stores. No. I've walked by them and thought, nah, no, I don't, uh, I'd like, I don't, it's astronaut food. I'm not interested. <laughs> we may have wandered off topic. No, we're right there. Ironized yeast. <laughs> Your uh, conclusions, does it stand the test of time? I would say it is still a very scary piece of old radio. Uh, you said, listening to it twice, that you have you came to a second opinion. First time you listened to it was? First time I listened to it, I listened to it in traffic, driving in the car, mm-hmm. and I didn't pick up on some of the subtle things, and things aren't as scary in traffic in a car. Um, and so I do uh, think listeners should listen to these old radio shows alone, in the dark, well, maybe with a loved one. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> but my second listening... Um, what should they be wearing, Josh? <laughs> well, I'm not going to dictate that much. Um, <laughs> Maybe later. In a later podcast, I'll tell you what to wear. Uh, but yeah, I think it's definitely scary. It doesn't, it's a little more antiquated. It does ask you to make some leaps as a modern listener, the, the setting and the visiting Maud Jenkins for her complimentary food in the woods. <laughs> you know, so I, I think if you. Get I find past that charming. That, <laughs> I can get past that easily. And I loved also there was some Christmas to it. I like all of it. But yeah, <laughs> which is also, I would say, so you're saying it does the I second think it's time. an eerie ghost story, yes. and, and listening to it in the right frame of mind without distraction, it's, it's uh, scary. The twist of the setup of Christmas, singing, good friends, going to visit the cook in the woods, all of the quaintness of it that, that goes terribly, horribly wrong very quickly yeah. is one of the reasons I find it terrifying, I find the writing terrifying, and from above all else, I find the acting superbly terrifying. And that's why I found it to stand the test of time. Tim? Uh, I'm similar to Joshua, that uh, a, a slightly qualified yes. Definitely the first time I heard it, the opening sort of quaint holiday singing, uh, not to like sound like I have a horrible life, but that sounded really alien. Like, they were really happy. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it very quickly uh, became a story I could definitely invest myself into mm-hmm. um, and paid off. So I think once you get past that initial, this is kind of a little corny, dare I say. I did. I said corny a little bit. Yeah. Uh, once what, you get past that. Like lines like, why can't you enjoy the fresh air without that cabaret sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, why can't you? That's a really good question, Joshua. Why does she have to be cabareting about just enjoy the horse ride. It'll soon become a waist deep trek through <laughs> drifts in your dress. But afterwards, there's some borscht that's going to knock your socks off. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to have to do it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Mysterious Old Time Listening Society, old, <laughs> Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society podcast. There, I got it right the second time. And I'm Eric. I'm Tim. I'm Joshua. And again, thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, the name of the uh, show again was from Lights Out called Poltergeist. And uh, if you want to learn more about us or the show or re-listen to this or even links to other cool stuff in old time radio land, you can go to 
ghoulishdelights.com. Ghoulishdelights.com. And if you're not there already, and if you are there, start clicking around. And I don't know, send some money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, until next time, remember... <laughs> <laughs>